everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am looking at the most sick OpenAI codex use cases I have seen so far and these are pretty mind-blowing, especially considering that Codex model was released like a couple of weeks ago. Codex is the latest AI model by OpenAI that is a descendant of GPT-3 and that was trained on billions of natural language words as well as lines of code coming from public repositories mostly from github codex is like a neural net on steroids and it's very proficient in languages such as python but also javascript go ruby and even shell and a couple of others i am linking to all of these use cases down below so you can check it out all of these come from either open AI engineers OpenAI community ambassadors that spread the word about the new technologies or tester users. Let's jump to the awesome applications of it. This use case caught my eye because I'm a very visual person myself and I love to play with visuals and Codex seems to do it really well. Bram Adams tested Codex for meme generation both when it comes to the visuals but also the words connected to it and you can see some of the lord of the rings outcomes here david schnorr played with some generative art concepts both static and dynamic which i think look really impressive and lucas negrito created a demo of image processing app in codex that manipulates the images depending on what you want to achieve with it all of them look really awesome to me and codex seem to do really well in the image department this use case comes as no surprise since openai itself released recently a demo of a space game that codex wrote with its javascript sandbox I have recently tried to repeat the demo with a little bit different setup, you can check it out here. But also there were people that were playing with different variations of different types of games. Both Vertinsky and Polymath were recently working on some old school game called Snake that you all probably remember. Turns out Codex is able to create simple snake game without any errors. Another game that Vertinsky was looking at was Tetris. It's pretty mind-blowing that this model itself is able to create games which is difficult normally right i mean i love it so this one is particularly sweet because it looks pretty futuristic and at the same time i can see a lot of applications that help people with disabilities for example to interact with computer this way the most interesting experiments here i saw were coming from ram adams that use his own voice to interact with codex put a paragraph under that and also tried webcam and his own movements to interact with it with great success the most interesting application i have seen so far is Codebox by Andrew Main. Codebox is a voice app that generates code from natural language commands. So it basically uses the sound of your voice to generate code. At the moment, it works with Python and JavaScript. Since Codex was trained on billions of words coming from natural language and also from code, it's pretty great at understanding any type of language it turns out. Vlad Alex, for example, tried to write a simple command in four different languages, English, German, Japanese, and Russian. And the results for these commands in different languages were all the same. So you can basically talk to Codex in any language and it seems to get it. Another super cool use case I see here from a little bit different angle is the translation from one programming language to another, to another, to another. One of the cool examples here in the programming languages department is a program that writes itself in Python, then rewrites itself in Ruby, then rewrites itself in Python, then rewrites itself in Ruby ad infinitum. Pretty dope. Turns out Codex is pretty good at solving the first grade math test. And here are the results of the OpenAI experiment. You can count it yourself, it works some out-of-the-box experiments letting Codex interact with users' browser and computer system. Yash Dani tried Codex in controlling his webcam and also transforming speech coming from his webcam live stream into a text. Taking this idea a little bit further, Natalie Pistonovich created a demoing tool 
that includes a video, a screen share, speech to text translation, and even a cat logo. And it took her less than 10 minutes to deploy it. While we are in the useful tool department, Anya Kubov used Codex to create her personal website in around 10 minutes that looks nice and representable and was built using only natural language commands. I think the record for creating the fastest tool using Codex belongs to Slava Bobrov, who created login forms in less than 30 seconds. Aryan built a super cool application that acts as a playground for extracting insights from any kind of data using natural language. Really nice. James Blanco, on the other hand, experimented with Codex for fitting models to toy datasets and also to exploration of existing datasets such as Alexa dataset. WritePy updated their app with OpenAI Codex and now you can use their app for uploading your data, describing it and asking whatever you'd like to learn about it and then just simply watch it happen. Andrew Cantino wrapped OpenAI Codex into a Chrome extension that allows users to manipulate the layout of popular websites and turns out Codex is really good at understanding its layout. In this example you can see extension manipulating the layout of Hacker News website. Turns out you can also use Codex to create a web scrapper. Here in just a few minutes, Harish wrote a web scrapper that extracts links for his own blog. Brian Paris used Codex to work with 3D graphics. And in this example, Codex is rendering 3D geometric figures in a really cool way. Add a blue box. Reduce the size of the box to 10 centimeters. And last but not least, awesome application of Codex that I have found is AirGift, which uses Codex for altering augmented reality with voice commands. For me, this is one of the next level use cases of Codex, and I'm really looking forward to see the creations made with the app and the similar. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm amazed at Codex capabilities that we already see and for sure there will be more of them to come. I'm certainly looking forward to it and I'm gonna keep an eye on it. If you want to stick around, make sure to hit the subscribe button and see you next time.